So welcome, thanks for joining and thanks everybody who also will be uh, checking this presentation in the recording. Today we will be talking about, or I mostly will be talking about the subject which is dear for my heart. First of all, because like probably five, no, almost six years ago, I went through this process myself and a lot of things that I will be talking about, I also faced myself. So I can relate to these problems. And I also talk a lot to people who face these problems on a day-to-day -day basis. So I work a lot as a coach and as a, as a trainer. And that allows me to, to kind of think more and more about this problems that uh, first time managers face and also kind of to group them and categorize. So today I will talk about the most prominent groups that I, I see. Uh, maybe there's going to be something else. It would be interesting to know whether there are anything that I, I've missed, but let's talk about that. Uh, thanks uh, for joining. I think who joined? Adriana, thanks for joining as well. Uh, we're just about to begin. Thanks. It was a little bit difficult. I had to search between all the emails I had from Google account, so I can find the link. But here I am. I joined. Super, super. We're also making the recording, so you didn't miss anything, but just in case, the recording will be there. So for those who don't know me, my name is Alex. Uh, I'm an engineer my, to manager myself, uh, being a developer, so I went through through usual arc from being developer to being then team lead and now doing mostly managerial work. I haven't code probably for five years more or more or less so. So I kind of hands off in terms of technical stuff nowadays. Also around the time that I switched to more leadership role, I I got my first coaching training and that helped a lot because first of all I was more prepared to having one-on-one -on -one conversations and this is one of the things that people sometimes struggle with to, to have these conversations one-on-one -on -one, how to uh, explore deeper how to find out what people really want how to build the connection so that that really helped and since then I also been helping mostly beginning managers and also managers who who are going on the, on the next level so I help them to develop their leadership skills, soft skills, and all in all to, to be more successful in their roles. So now to you, just a few questions about yourself. Where are you connecting from? Just to keep it lightly, what's your favorite food? And what would be the best outcome of this presentation for you? Please use the chat to, to type your answers. I'm sure that the second question is the hardest one. And I usually answer that my favorite food is chicken tikka masala. I like Indian food is very much. So from Anna Belarus Mogilev, any fish? Feel a little bit more confident in the face of a new career step. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sure that this presentation will help because it make you more aware of what you can face down the line. Hi, Alexander. 
Would you mind answering those questions? So from Petr, random cafe near Carlo and Amnesty, not a food you don't have references. Some pitfall bullet points, but more importantly, story about pitfalls. Okay, we'll have that. By the way, Petr, did we meet, did we meet each other or work together? Today. Okay. Cool. Today, I don't know, uh, but uh, I was at one of your meetups back, uh, back in the day, uh, before the apocalypse, uh, I guess it was about conflict management or something like this. So, yeah. Yeah, just wanted to check whether we know each other or not. Cool. <laughs> Any other expectations? Alexandra, Belarus, Tofu, I think it will be useful for my future career. From Adriana, Prague Pizza, Tips and Tricks for Popper, Manager Career Growth. Okay. Radek, if you will decide to, to type your answer, please do, but no, no pressure. Uh, so my suggestion, my offer to you, because I, there's gonna be a lot of me talking and like by just listening, it's hard to really get value from this, this presentation or any kind of content. So I would offer you to, as I go along, as I list the things, the issues, ask yourself questions about them. So is there something that you already experienced if you are managing already? Is there something that you can see yourself facing in the future? In that case, how, what's the best way for you to prepare? I will be giving you some kind of hints, some advice in order how to address this, uh, these issues or mitigate them but there are no kind of silver bullet and sometimes you need to craft your own, uh, own answers and own recipes. And in case you have any questions, please feel free to interrupt me. You can use your voice. I will be also checking the chat. So let's, let's have a conversation. I, I have a lot of content for today, but it's going to be better if we have some uh, discussion, some conversation. With that, let's go to the, to the meaty part. I count, I believe, 13 of them. I mean, probably it's not the exhaustive list, but I, I wasn't able to find anything else which is cannot be categorized by any of those rubrics. But if you find something is missing at the end, we can uh, discuss. Maybe I should add some more categories. So let's start with the first one. And this is probably, I, I didn't order them in any particular orders, except for the first two ones. So this one I think is the most important, is not enlisting enough support. And it's very important both before you uh, get the promotion or accept this promotion and also afterwards. So sometimes people have this conflict about uh, asking for help because they want to seem professional and capable. And because of that, they don't really ask for support afterwards, especially when they have any issues or uh, they make any mistakes. And this makes this process much, much harder. So one of the major mistakes I see people do, and I've, I've recently had a lot of conversation with people like that. And again, I see that a lot of things accumulated already. Have they talked to me earlier, it's gonna be it could have been easier to address. And the thing is that you will need a lot of different support and your manager probably not going to be the most proper person you can talk to. So sometimes you, you need to see from the different angles, what kind of support you might be required. So sometimes you need some kind of content. Sometimes you need some advice. Sometimes you need just some emotional support, just maybe a friend to whom you can talk to. So as you see this quote from, from the great book called Becoming a Manager, a lot of people miss this opportunity to talk and share uh, what's bothering them in non, uh, non judgmental setting. And when they got the promotion, 
people usually see themselves as being evaluated and judge, judged. This is usually not the case and people are trying to help you, but sometimes our vision is narrowing and because of that, we are not seeing the opportunities to enlist support. So don't assume that you need to do everything on your own, that you need to overcome all the problems on your own. And don't assume that people don't want to help you. Yeah, probably some don't want, but the more you ask, the more help you will get. So a few of the advice. First one, very important, is that before you accept uh, anything, try to ask what kind of support will be available to you. So try to find out what's going to be available for you in terms of uh, trainings, mentoring, coaching, any kind of uh, courses, internal or external, that you can take. Also, well, we'll get to that, so I won't mention this for now. Find some listeners who can be non-judgmental and who, who can support you. Sometimes they not necessarily need to, to have a similar experience or to be from the same industry, maybe just a friend. But somebody finds some context where you can just spend, where you can just express whatever is bothering you. Because it's very important because if you, if you allow those things to accumulate, it's gonna be hard to find uh, the exit. What I found and what I face time and time again that people saying, oh, when I think it on my own, it seems like there are, there's no possibilities and those only problems and limitations. But when I talk to you as a coach, when I just voice it, uh, it seems like, okay, there are some possibilities. There are some uh, things that I can take. So it's very important to, to have opportunity to verbalize it and to basically express everything that, which is bothering you. Uh, there are professionals that can help you. There's a lot of uh, mentoring, both free mentoring and paid mentoring out there. You can uh, find people constantly posting somewhere on LinkedIn that they accept mentors, or you can just can ask somebody you, you know and, and respect as a manager. Maybe just ask them a few questions or ask them if they can go out for a coffee with you and advise something. This is very important to, to ask for support. Uh, there are communities. There's a lot of communities for beginning managers and for more experienced managers as well. So you can find those. And actually, if you would be interested, maybe I can send you some after after the meeting. Uh, prioritizing human connection. So basically, our biology is that we are soothed, we are distressing when we communicate with live people. That's that's the way we we. Uh, diffuse our stress that's 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 how our biology works so have some human connection talk to people face to face content and some videos and some talks are very important but also having some human connection is very important as well so these are a uh, few of the advice that i have uh, related to this problem let me know if you have any questions, any comments about this one. And somebody asked for, for examples. Just today I had a co coaching conversation with one guy, really smart, uh, smart person, but he's direct manager. He feels like he's direct manager who is probably like 40 years uh, older than him, doesn't respect him enough. So he, he feels inferior. And in this situation, you can imagine that it's super hard to, to progress, to ask something when uh, your emails are not answered for, for a week on average. So yeah, in situation like this, it's very important to, to find who else can, can support you. Okay, so I assume there are no questions at the moment. And I'll also be try to keep up time. Thanks for the example. Mm -hmm. The problem I have is I, I'm, I'm usually very concise. So I also wrote down some examples and I have uh, this, this uh, sheet of paper with examples with myself. So I, I'll try to, to look from time to time there and provide you some examples. Uh, the second one, super, super frequent. 
it's it's probably the thing that I see in all the cases that uh, with people I work with. Bad habits, why, why they are in, in quotes? Because these are the things that were, that made you successful in the first place as a technical specialist, be it developer, tester, business analyst, designer, any, any kind of technical job that you did. And you, you were successful with that, obviously. But now as you got the promotion, your zone of responsibility changed, but the habits remain the same. And it's very easy to overdo the stuff that you did in order to become successful when it's not really relevant or relevant to the same degree as before. Uh, of course, th th there's going to be a distinction between like pure managers, team leads who also have uh, technical tasks on them still. So, of course, you would need to calibrate that. I'm not saying that you need to uh, get rid of all technical tasks right away, but people tend to overdo this. And another important aspect of it is that people tend to do, to return to habitual uh, behavior when they are in stress. So we'll talk about stress a bit more, but basically what is going to be your default behavior to, to answer with automatic response. And automatic response is like get down and code something. So for example, if you face a problem, there is a big chance that you will not delegate or, or teach some, somebody to, to do it, but you try to resolve it on your own. Sometimes that's okay. Sometimes you lead by example and you do this on your own, but people tend to overwhelm themselves with that. And the most common outcome of that is that they become frustrated because people do not show, um, they're not proactive enough that their teams, the people who are subordinates and also, you feel that you need to do everything on your own. And basically, this is the process which is uh, instigated by, by two parties. So you take too much on your own so that your team cannot step up. And because it's not stepping up, you feel that you need to take on even more. And here, the, the, the vicious cycle. Um, so what can be done about this? So first one is, again, it's good to do it before, before even taking the role. Explore as much as you can between the different stakeholders, not necessarily on your, only the manager who will give you uh, the promotion. Or if you're joining as a manager in a new company, uh, try to, to get in touch with as many your potential stakeholders as possible and ask them what's going to be expected from you. So kind of find uh, the success criteria and find it from all the sides possible, not only from your manager, but from your peers, from people who's going to be on the same level as you, from people who are going to be in a different functions. For example, if you are an engineer manager, maybe it makes sense for you to talk to support people, salespeople, hiring uh, team, and so on. So try to understand what's going to be criteria of your success. If you have this, it doesn't mean that you will get a prescription about what needs to be done. Like it's, it's not possible. I promise you that it's not going to be possible, but the more inputs you have, the clearer picture you will have of what specifically needed in this role. And it's also good to, uh, to explore this within company as well, because there, there's a lot of great content. There's a lot of great books and talks about what managers should do, what team leads should do, what tech leads should do but they may not provide some crucial expectations which is relevant in, inside your company. And that there is a great metaphor, 13, uh, 13 fairy, I believe. So there's, there's a fairy who, who was not invited on the, on the birthday party. And because of that, she, she was very frustrated and then all, all the troubles which happens in this fairy tale. So try to avoid facing the situation with the 13 fairy. So try to involve and talk to as many people as possible. Uh, when you have this list, try to reflect. So take some time off to reflect what you are doing and see whether you are ticking all the boxes or you are just doing stuff which is 
natural, which is uh, habitual for yourself. And another point is do what's not comfortable. I'm not a huge proponent of, uh, of this saying, of this notion of getting out of zone of comfort. So I prefer that you stay and I stay in comfort as much as possible, but try new stuff. It shouldn't be necessarily uncomfortable, but something new so that you have more, uh, so it's gonna be more natural for you to try different stuff. Yeah, so reflect on, on the things. Are how conscious and aware your decisions about the stuff that you do? Is it because it's easy and natural or is it because this is what is, what is expected from you? And basically this is, this is one of the pitfalls that I fell into when I was doing, when I was in, in, in my team lead role. I was very angry with everybody that they were not uh, pulling up their load because I'm provoked that I was doing much more than, than that I needed rather than asking them to do. And also because I was good at certain things. So it was easier for me to do them rather than ask somebody and I didn't need to control. So this is, this is very common thing. Any questions, any comments about this one? If you have anything, just free, feel free to interrupt me. So now this, this may be not the most obvious one. So it's hard to become beginner again, because in most cases you are promoted or you are hired in a new company in a managerial role because you were successful as a technical person. So you were a successful individual contributor and afterwards these days are gone. So you need to become basically a newbie, a rookie, and you need to start, start make stupid mistakes. You will not know primitive stuff. You will be asking silly questions. And as I mentioned here on the slide is, it can be a huge blow to, to one's ego from being a star performer and the person who is admired by everyone to, to becoming basically a, a, a rookie. So again, for that, just to be prepared for that, it, it's good if you realize that this, this thing can happen because again, then you can be prepared for it and you can, uh, again, enlist support so that you understand that uh, your questions, your mistakes is possible to discuss with somebody. And also I think being humble and vulnerable is very important because if you're trying to, to create a facade of successful manager right, right away, it probably will do much more harm to you than, than, than help you. Again, it's also important to set uh, the expectations up front. And it's, it's much easier to do before you start if you have this conversation, let's say with a manager who will give you a promotion, mention to them that I'm going to be a new manager. I will make a lot of mistakes. What, how, how should I discuss them? How should I bring them up? It's going to be much easier if you have this conversation up front, and you will be prepared to, to then come. Remember this conversation? Now I came to you to discuss this problem that I have. And Related to this uh, to, and to the previous one, don't escape into familiar territory. So it's easy to, when we feel this uncomfortable of new position of being a novice, it's easy to shift to what's familiar and comfortable and pleasant to us. So if you were super successful uh, software developer, it's easier to go back to this role and save the day on your own. But your job may be specifically to enable other people to do this thing not to uh, swap the boards on your own and be the hero and be the savior of the day. So in most cases, that's not what, what, you, do, what you should do. You should enable other people to do this. Just a small check-in to see whether there are any questions before I switch to the next one. Nope. 
Uh, the next one. Th this is not relevant for everybody, but sometimes people are not understanding what's authority. And I, I'm saying this from the standpoint that it's not like there is a definition and specific steps that you can take and achieve it. it it's probably will be gained in a different ways. But sometimes people mistakenly uh, think that by having the position, by having the official role, people will follow them and people will listen to what they say and people will do what they say. It's not gonna be the case. So in the long run, there is no way you can make somebody do something which they don't want. So you need to find a way to establish your authority you need to find a way to, um, how should I put it? Um, to don't get into your head the idea that they will listen you only because you are, have some uh, official position. Especially I think in IT, people are not, uh, clinging too tightly to, to their uh, jobs. It's easy for them to find something else. So if you will become too authoritative or if you become too pushy, there's a great chance that you will demotivate people and they would be just leaving. Um, one specific case of this is trying to rely too much on um, expertise. So sometimes people think that I am the most experienced, I am the most senior people. It means that if somebody comes to me asking questions, I must know the answer. And the metaphor I, <clears throat> I recently hear from one of my clients, it, it was just the first conversation and I, I'm, I'm sure it's gonna change in the future. But what he mentioned to me, he, he mentioned the concept of drill sergeant. The, the sergeant which works with what's newbies in, in American army. And basically they supposedly should be able to do anything they ask rookies. So he mentioned that I need to be like this drill sergeant. I need to, to know everything that I'm asking my people. It, it may work in some cases, specifically if, if your lead role is very hands-on and your team is not very senior, but in many more cases, the sum of experience of people under you will be much bigger. And you would need to find a way to leverage and you would need to find a way to let go. And you need to find a way to work with people who are smarter than you. Uh, I worked with one client. We actually didn't address this issue, but he was, uh, he was a project manager and he was promoted as a, basically a team lead for project managers. So he was not, managing them as a functional manager, but he, he was managing them as a people manager. And for him, the issue was that they were much more experienced than, he, than him. And he was a project manager who came from construction to IT. And it was hard for him because before that, he was always managing from the standpoint of expertise, from the standpoint of knowing more. And it could be a real challenge when you need to work with people who are smarter than you. And if you are, will be developing as a manager, you will face the situation when sometimes you will need to, to start working with people who are smarter than you and you need to find a key to their uh, lock. Actually, when I was promoted, I also was not the most technically savvy people, uh, person on a team. So for me, it, it was also a challenge, but I, I was good at different stuff. I was good at coordinating, at communicating with customers, so I guess I, I partially, I gain authority from, from those kind of people skills and coordination skills. So again, not prescriptive, but as a, as a potential model that can help, it's called the trust equation. It comes from uh, the book called The Trusted Advisor, basically mostly for consultants, in order how to establish the trust with their customers. And what this formula says, what this model says is that trustworthiness is a component of several things. It's a component of reliability, credibility, and intimacy divided by self-orientation. And you can translate it in different words. Reliability is 
what you say. Are you competent? Credibility is whether you are doing what you're saying. Do you have integrity? Intimacy is basically creating comfort for them in different ways, so kind of being supportive. And self-orientation is whether you are serving them or only serving yourself. People usually feel this very good. So these are the four components that can help you start thinking about how can you gain trust. I also think and believe strongly that vulnerability is also a great resource for, for trust and authority. Especially if you come to people who are more <clears throat> experienced than you, people who technically are more experienced than, than yourself. Um, if, you, if you be honest with them and say like, look, I know that you know much more than me. And I'm asking for your help in order for us as a team to be successful. The probability that they will respond positively much more rather than if you pretend that you know something that you don't know or you will try to pretend that you are more qualified that, than you are. So people usually are very good at spotting funny play. And serving your team in, in many different ways, but basically the, these are the, the part of, of this formula. Questions, comments? That was the first one, the fourth one, right? I'm just checking whether we'll be able to cover all of them. Hmm. Okay. Maybe a question to you. Is this tempo okay with you? Should I speed up, slow down? Does anything make sense? Because I have to this tendency to rush a bit and speed up. It's okay for me. Okay. Maybe more explanation needed, more examples. It's fine, okay. The next one, <clears throat> uh, misconception of the job. What I mean by this, and again, it's also inspired by this book, Becoming a Manager. It's a really great book, by the way, but I don't recommend reading it. It's, it's too academic and, and too thick, but it has a great ideas and insight. So what, what does it mean? It means that before we make the decision, before we are making our mind to, to go into this, on this route, the way we, we get the conception of this job is by observing our managers. And by observing our managers, we observe only part of what they do. So they have interaction with you, with your team members. This is something which is obvious for you. But they also have interaction with their peers. They have interaction with their managers. They have interaction with different people from different functions in your company. They have private uh, interactions with, uh, uh, with your peers. So if there are difficult conversations, they have them in private and there is no way for you to learn from them. So you inherently, you, you can observe only part of their job and you are not capable of understanding what are the missing pieces. So when you will be making the decision about accepting the offer of, of, of promotion or when you make your mind that this is something I really like, it looks very simple, it looks easy, he, this person uh, works very well, there's nothing complicated here, I can do it. But this decision may be made on very scanty information. So there are, there are probably are very big gaps in your understanding. And also one of the things that I mentioned on the slide is that usually your manager, it, it may depend on the particular situation, but in some cases you may have a very experienced manager. And because of that, some of the things may seem more easier than they are, especially for beginners. So how you overcome this? Of course, you need to talk to people and many of the tips of the advice I will give you will be regarding this. So you need to go out and talk about things that bother you and interest you to other people. And 
to address particular this pitfall, you need to ask specifically for the, for the unseen. You need to ask about the gaps. You need to ask about what are the problems? What are the challenges that they face? Maybe not everybody will uh, tell them, but again, it depends on how you ask. You can ask them about what was the biggest challenge they, uh, that they faced when they become manager, especially the manager in this company. What are expectations from their senior stakeholders? What you should be prepared in case if you will take this, this uh, opportunity or take the promotion. Should, would they recommend you becoming manager in this company? Again, depending on the level of trust you have with them. So in order to address this, you, you would need to find a way to, to complete your picture. And also ask yourself, what could I miss here? Because it's important for you also to take stock of the things that you see, but also that you don't see. I don't mention it here, but just realized right now that probably the good source of this information can be HRs as well, because usually they will <clears throat> support people who go through this transition. So they will have a lot of cases and they will have a lot of issues will, that they can uh, share with you without, uh, without sharing specific uh, identifiable details. So they can share some cases without talking specifically who, who, who was it. The next one, um, skills are not enough. So it's not going to be uh, an upgrade. It's going to be an overhaul. So it's going to be erroneous to expect that you will just learn a few skills and that will be it. In many cases, uh, especially the farther you go on the managerial leadership path, there will be a personal transformational journey. It's kind of the continuing your, your journey of uh, maturity. And uh, there's a developmental psychologist, Robert Keegan. So he talks about it in terms of, so he names it uh, mental complexity. So you will need to develop a next level of mental complexity because the, the level of responsibility will grow. The level of, mm, not the level, but you will need to care for more people. So another metaphor could be here is basically as if, as if becoming a parent for people. So similar as becoming a parent is a transformational journey. Same to that, becoming a manager will be a transformational journey. So you will face a lot of uh, resistance. You will face a lot of triggers, a lot of emotions that that you need to find a way to address. It's not going to be that huge for everybody. Maybe for some, this transformation will uh, happen naturally with time, but it's also good if you can have some support with that as well, uh, especially emotional issues. Uh, I know I talk to people who who take it very personally. So for example, people who are very workaholic, uh, they tend to, to not have boundaries between work and their identity. So any kind of issue, any challenge they have to their work and identity, they also assume it for, for who they are as a person. So if they fail, not to fail, but make the mistake on job, they feel themselves as a, as a failure. They don't sleep, they have problems with digestions, they take it personally and stressfully. So it's important to also be able to, to draw boundaries and address those uh, limitations and triggers. Let me check my, my notes, whether I have any examples I wanted to share with you. Yeah, again, I remember working with one client and the kind of work we had, he described it as a, as a having tectonic shifts. So basically there was some, something changing underneath and the visible change only followed up like uh, two, three weeks, a month later. So there are sometimes some beliefs that you need to address 
some things that you need to become more aware of. Uh, for example, I had a client who who was avoiding delivering bad feedback because he he believed that if you tell something bad, you're gonna damage the relationship. And of course, this this is a false dichotomy. So there is a way to deliver feedback, corrective feedback in a gentle way and respectful way. But because there is a deep belief underneath and sometimes people are not aware of them, you, you avoid these conversations. And same person, he has, he was describing himself as being diplomatic. And this is a good way to perceive yourself, but it's also a limitation because sometimes you need to have flexibility. But if you stick to this identity, I'm a diplomatic person, then you will not go and you will not hold people accountable, for example. So sometimes this stories, this narrative that we create about ourselves could, could also be a hindrance. So yeah, skills are important, but in many cases, only the skills will not be enough. So tips, advice. First one is that prepare that it's gonna be uh, a long journey. It's not gonna happen overnight. It doesn't mean that you will be a failure for for a year or two years or anything like this it may be not very stressful but it's going to be long before you uh, before you as assume the new identity or you become fully comfortable in this new identity of course some deep internal work can can help here uh, therapy coaching definitely definitely could be a good way to to address some of the issues mentoring as well and developing awareness of your internal game. So basically digging deeper, asking yourself, what, what, what is my assumption here? What I'm believing in, in order for this to be the case. Like today I have a co coaching conversation with one client and I told to him kind of jokingly, but it was true that he usually have the more negative expectations than they, than they should be. So I, I challenge him to experiment because he usually has expectations that if I tell them they will be frustrated or angry or something like this. And when we experiment, he comes, well, they, they take it pretty good. And this is what's called cognitive uh, distortion. So basically your expectations are not very adequate. So sometimes you need to recalibrate them. And th this is basically what cognitive uh, behavioral psychology does. It, it helps to correct those cognitive distortions. So any questions here, any comments? Anything? I I really like conversations and discussions. It's hard for me to, to just talk and talk and talk. But I understand that then probably there are not questions, so I'll continue. Um, devaluing your contributions. And more generally about understanding of the value that you bring. In your technical role, role in your role as an individual contributor it in many cases is super clear what where is the value that you bring you do the task you you deploy it you see the results you see the functionality you can in some cases you can talk to happy customers it's it's more or less clear the feedback loop is clear so it's easy to understand how how specifically you bring value for managerial work, it's much harder. And feedback loop is not clear. The value that you're bringing is not clear. The result that uh, your action have could have been delayed or could lag in, in months or, I don't know, half a year. But still, you, you need to persevere. So it, sometimes it's, it's a very hard psychologically to to face this this thing about how to reimagine your value and it's also related to your identity because 
if before it, it was clear what specifically you do to, uh, to bring value. Right now it's hard. So again, this is the way to reinvent yourself. And as I mentioned here, related to that, some challenge that I hear people mention when, when we start to work is, before that, I could have easily go to on the market and be hired. Right now, I'm jack of all trades, master of none. There's nothing I can do that good as before. And usually the cases in IT market is that it's hard to find a job, managerial job uh, from, from the market. So usually people tend to hire technical people and grow them from within the company. I mean, it's not, uh, it's not always the case, but it's, it's harder for you to find a job as a manager when you are a manager. So sometimes people feel like I'm losing my market value. I'm, I cannot be breadwinner for my family anymore. And this is again, very hard psychological issue to deal with because sometimes people, if you rephrase this uh, question, is basically about your financial safety in the long run. Of course, there is no easy answer to that. A uh, few of the things that I can suggest is that um, ask for feedback regularly and ask other people specifically for uh, value that you bring. Reflecting on the impact of your actions. Um, right here I mentioned, for example, if you motivate somebody, you can save your company a few thousand of dollars because hiring somebody else, it's costly. Also, there might be a gaps when you are not able to deliver um, that many features because somebody leaves. So sometimes your one email can, ha can have a huge impact. Maybe it's not that easy to see it, but it's there. And another important thing is praise yourself and celebrate. And if it works for you, write down your successes. It's gonna be easier for you if you will be interviewing in the future because it's easy, like our, our psychology is very good at criticizing, but not good at praising. So it's easy to remember your challenges and mistakes, but it's hard to, uh, to remember your wins and your successes. So write them down, create your register. And when you feel down, when you feel demotivated, get back to it, get back to, um, to the feedbacks that you have. Like, Around months ago, one ex-subordinate wrote me and said to me that uh, I was the best manager that she had. And it's kind of nice, kind of, you have this nice thing going feeling. It made my day, but I, I didn't stop there. I, I wrote the best manager that I had. I, I wrote the similar message because I want to spread the good word. So yeah, praising people, it, it's very good. So be able to, to receive praise, maybe even ask for praise or ask for uh, for for good feedback. So yeah, this this is for this that there's no easy answer, and this is the something you would need to construct yourself. But in many cases, if you will be playing a tech lead role, you will also do some technical job. So maybe it's not going to be that hard. Questions, comments? Yeah, maybe anyhow, if you're a bit afraid of your future, like being a manager, you always have some space to step back and to become a good technical specialist again. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's an interesting article about, they call it a pendulum. I don't remember what kind of pendulum. Well, basically it's kind of a pendulum. You go there and you, you go back. I, I probably cannot full heartedly agree that you should go there or there is a pool when you reach this point that you need to go back. Different people prefer different things and we'll talk about this. But yeah, it also could be a possibility to kind of move in, in somewhat wobbly direction. So try this and then go back. Yeah, it's important also to understand uh, what you want and what you need. And it could be if you face this thing, we talked about this a bit uh, later, that you haven't thought through well about what, what you 
you want. And if, if, you, if this issue is something that it's really bothering you for a long time, maybe you made the wrong decision. I'm, I'm, I'm surely not gonna be telling this for sure, but maybe. Um, so this thing which is called affinity bias. So we like, we trust, we help, we prefer to talk to people who are like us. So by being a technical person, we understand what bothers technical person, technical people. And it's easier to empathize with them. It's easier to help them. It's easier to see the problems. It's easier to focus and stick our attention to their problem. And sometimes rightfully so. So we definitely need to protect our team from bullshit which happens around the organization, maybe not adequate, adequate requirements or adequate requests, that's true. But we need to find a way to balance because our job in many cases is not only to protect the team, but we, are also, we also should serve the company and we need to take into account different, uh, different perspectives, different point of views and different interests. So be aware of, of this tendency to side with, with, with your team and not really listen to opposing views, to views of people higher ups or people from the different teams. Um, similar to, to the ones that we discussed before, find out what's expected from you, uh, what's needed from you by your company as well, not only from your team, uh, give other people benefit of a doubt and don't play game uh, where there's us against them. So it's very important to sometimes stay impartial. Yeah, you need to serve your team, you need to protect your team, but you, you don't need to protect your team from, like maybe you need in some way to protect your team from your company, but also realize that your team is your company. And sometimes in order to serve your company, your team need to, to do something which they are not really happy about or not comfortable about. And then your role is to find a way to, to really ensure this. So this is very relevant for introverts, techies who are used to, to deal with computers who understand not easy, but in a way simple interactions where there are clear instructions and clear response. So it's easy to, to stick with to technical matters and not really build relationships. And it's easy to stick to rational part, but of course people, of course I'm saying, of course, hopefully you, you also realize that, that it's not only in, it's not enough only to provide uh, rational reasons. So you need to, to have certain, like, like in trust formula, you need to show that you care. If you show that you care, if you have some personal touch, it's gonna to be much easier for, for you to achieve what you need to achieve. Uh, again, try to build relationship with different functions. If you need to grab a phone and call somebody and ask for help, there's gonna be much higher chance that they will uh, answer right away if you went to coffee with them or they know you personally. If, if they answering only the picture in, in your phone book or whatever uh, directory that you have, probably they will not be as warm. So that's, that's, that's the nature of human relationships. So people who we know, people who we trust, people who we respect, we will give them more attention and we will uh, help them more. So try to build as many relationships as you can. Of course, uh, you still need to do your job because maybe you know some people who were super good at building relationships but not really doing anything. I had a manager like this. He achieved a lot, but he was not respected. And like, it's always a choice of a person. Maybe he didn't even know that he was not respected, but behind his back, people were not very, of him so yeah of course you need to balance it 
but you need to find a way to build relationships. And sometimes you will find that it could be a game changer because you can be asking somebody to do something, but before you, you build more personal touch, uh, they are not really willing to do something. Uh, one of the examples, of course, it's not always possible, but if you work with uh, distributed teams, seeing somebody in person, well, sometimes video calls are, are a good proxy to that, but even talking to somebody in person uh, could could change the way you interact because when you see a live person in flesh and blood, it's much easier to understand them and uh, build a working relationships. Again, talking to people and importantly, understanding that uh, relationship matter. It's not going to be that you will write super logical, super convincing email and the stuff that you want to happen will happen. Sometimes it's not enough. So understand that there is a kind of undercurrent behind the logic and that there is a personal connection, an emotional connection. Oh. Um, again, this is also probably relevant for techies as well. So searching for perfect solutions. It's, it's natural for us to optimize as much as possible and being in a way inclined to be perfectionist. But rarely it's the case, especially in things related to people issues, that, that there is an ideal uh, decision or solution out there. Sometimes you need to work with what's there already. You need to be prepared that people won't be happy. Like the best example is moving desks. It just come up to my mind. Moving desks, it's probably the hardest thing in in IT industry that I faced. That's that's something which challenges the the most uh, primordial emotions in people. People become like animals when they feel that their sacred uh, desks are at, at risk. So yeah, sometimes you will need to to just play with trade-offs. It's good if you can <clears throat> explore the solution, uh, find what's the criteria, and see how it fits the criteria. But in many cases, you will need to do the first thing, which is more or less working, because sometimes you will need to act quick, and you need to to then uh, repair the damage. So yeah, sometimes it, it may be a bit daunting that you try your best, you try to, um, how should I put it? Uh, you try to butter up as many people as possible, but they still are not happy. So yeah, prepare that it won't work for everybody. And sometimes that's okay. So yeah, easier, than, uh, easier to say than to do. Let go of striving of perfection. So caught yourself, try to, to observe whether you are becoming mired in, in, in this pattern, kind of analysis paralysis. Sometimes you would need to make hard decisions and it's good if you can caught yourself uh, when you're stuck in this decision. Another good so, uh, suggestion is that find somebody, some, some trusted person with whom you can go through the decision that uh, it's up to, to do. Uh, if you are capable of verbalizing all the aspects, it may be that you will find what's, what's happening and what's missing. Basically doing a uh, rubber duck approach, but with a live person. Debug your, debug your decision making. Any questions, any comments? Nope. Um, energy, energy not in, in some new age meaning, but energy just in, in terms of something which allows you to act. And 
again, what, what I see a lot is that the default modality for people is to expand energy. So by default, you will be expanding a lot of energy. And it's only when you are consciously make effort to replenish it, it will happen. So people don't uh, put in their calendars uh, a walk or a coffee with, with a friend or something like this. But they put a lot of things in their calendars which, uh, which basically draw their energy out of them. So you need to be careful because uh, as you change the role and the nature of your responsibility and task tasks will change. Um, if you find some balance in your role as a technical person, probably that balance will be disrupted. So you will probably have more meetings, you will probably have more stressful conversations. So especially at the beginning, pay a lot of attention about on, on uh, your level of stress. So you need to pay attention because sometimes these uh, symptoms may not be that obvious. So you need to, to take stock and be super, uh, super aware and conscious about what's happening. Are you coming from home from, from your job exhausted or energized? Do you feel that you have a lot of energy at the beginning of your day, but by noon, maybe you feel like you're completely exhausted? So yeah, you, you would need to, uh, to, to the su uh, suggestions, you need to skip schedule downtime. You need to, to do some stock and some explorations in terms of uh, what are the biggest drainers of your energy and what are the activities that bring you the most energy. And you need to shuffle them around so that you are not, uh, use up all your energy in the first few hours and then basically you cannot do anything and what you also need to be aware of is that again sometimes technical uh, work um, can can give you a burst of creativity of energy of accomplishment and in in new position in managerial role maybe you won't have that many opportunities to do that. So you would need to find more ways to have this meaningful, creative, deep work. And again, I cannot suggest what specifically could it be, but maybe some uh, conversations about strategy, kind of, uh, how should I put it? You know, like this, meetings when you go on a strategic, I forgot the word completely. Well, basically gathering up your team and thinking about strategic matters, what they want to achieve, what's working for them. This could be very um, invigorating activities because you tap into what's working for them, you tap into their uh, creativity, into their thinking, and things like this can, can also motivate and energize people. But again, you would need to explore on your own. And one of the ways to do it may be just to, to keep a journal and just for a week you can write down, I did this, what I feel after that. I did this, what I feel afterwards. And just see what are generic ca categories of things that, uh, that expand your energy and the things that uh, give you your energy back. So that way you will create a kind of catalog from where you can then plan your day so that you, you manage your energy better. So we are almost at the end of it. Mm. So this is related to, to, to the one about uh, finding your value. And of course, there is no right or wrong reason in the proper meaning of this word. So it's kind of one reason. Uh, my perception, what, what could be the wrong reason? The wrong reason could be not satisfied by your current state of affairs. So basically doing it as a reactive uh, action or as a reactive decision. What I mean by that is that, okay, I'm not happy about what I have now. The best way to, to solve this is to look 
like, okay, so what I want instead of it and not just grab the first opportunity that comes your way. And sometimes it, it's natural to, okay, I've been a senior or lead developer, then I will assume the role of team lead. It's natural progression, but it doesn't necessarily align with your values. So right here, you would probably need some soul searching and realize if you are not happy with your current job for some reason, try to see what will be a good fit. And I, I did this mistake. I wanted because I, I was tired of coding. For me, it played more or less well. Hopefully, I think I have been in this uh, on this journey for six years already. But in many cases, people may find that they did something without proper thinking. So yeah, I would suggest here to, to explore what do you really want rather than jumping to opportunities if, for example, somebody suggested to you. And again, exploration about what will be there, what kind of support will be there, how your work will be different. If you can ask people these questions, then you can also think for yourself whether it is something that you will enjoy or not. Oh, something dropped behind me. Um, and the second one for money. Well, I, I'm a strong believer and these, these are the my, value, my values. Maybe they will not resonate with you. But I'm saying that making career decisions for money are not the best strategy because there should be something more important which, uh, which will give you meaning for, for this job. And again, value might not, money might not be the, that much bigger uh, in, in proportion to the level of stress that, that you will receive. And also market flexibility and hireability can go down. So if even in the short run money will be bigger, maybe it's not gonna be mattering that much in, in the long run. But th these are just my suggestions, take them with a grain of salt. Um, what, what I suggest to you is before you, um, before you make this decision. So for example, if somebody comes to you and says, do you want to take this role? It means that it becomes a decision between A or B. A, um, I'm taking this offer and B, I'm staying where I am. And it's not the case. There is a C and D and so on. So usually when we face a choice, we narrow our choice by options that were offered to us and something else. But there are many more options. And if you are at the crossroad and you are making a decision about what's doing next, try to uh, brainstorm as many options as possible. And from there, you, you can choose something else. So don't be caught in this false dichotomy. Yeah, and it makes sense to explore and do this kind of exercise uh, to explore what, what do you want in the long term and see whether taking this offer or striving for, for this new role, it's gonna be aligned with what's valuable for you. And another suggestion is to kind of reverse your reasoning and think from the other side. What would be the absolute, uh, what would be the evidence and reasons for you to absolutely not take this offer? So what from the opposite side will make it no brainer for you? And by doing this, you will be able to think about the boundaries that you will, will not be willing to cross. And also it will be, it will give you more powerful position when you negotiate stuff. You can be upfront with people you are discussing. So this is the thing I'm not gonna be tolerating. Well, maybe not in, in these particular words, but you will be able to uh, negotiate your position more strongly when, when you realize what is not acceptable for you. Anything here, any questions, any comments? And the last one, bonus section. 
uh, not thinking big. What I mean by, by this is that a lot of people, and I, I, I've listed a lot of challenges, and you probably also know about a lot of challenges from your experience, from other people's experience. It's hard. There's a lot of challenges. There's a lot of issues. There's a mistakes. You need to admit mistakes. You need to uh, repair the damage. So it's super easy to concentrate on problems. And when we concentrate on problems, we just stuck in this narrow vision. When we stuck in our narrow vision, we don't see we don't see creative possibilities. We don't see reways. We don't see uh, well. There's, there's a lot of things that we don't see. When we stress, our vision is very, very narrow, and we either attack or we flee. And actually, the conversation I had today with, with the client that I mentioned, he had an interesting situation where one of his team members did interesting things to, to kind of to manipulate him into doing something. And he was stuck because he, he, he thought about, he, he was angry because of that. And he was stuck and he was thought that, okay, now I, I have to do it because he went to the manager, another manager went to another manager and this manager made this person, my client, do something. But as we, as we explored, it turned out that he could stood his, his ground. He could tell his manager, no, I'm not gonna be doing this. There are clear rules that we play here. And because of that, we will not accept this. And he was also able to talk to his subordinate and tell him that, look, there are certain rules. I appreciate that you really badly want this thing, but these are the rules that you would need to follow. So yeah, j just by talking, by discussing the situation, he was able to see the possibilities. And it's important to, to have this growth mindset and realize that there are always possibilities. There are people who want to help us. Uh, there are creative solutions. There might be problems that problems on this level, but if we look from the different level, or if we talk to, to other stakeholders, from their point of view, it's not a problem at all. And we're trying to fix something which shouldn't be fixed in the first place. So yeah, a lot of firefighting. And because of that, we cannot think creatively. We cannot think uh, strategically. I had a client, it was kind of probably the most prominent uh, success in my coaching career. She got promotion after one session. And we started from the situation where she had problems on the project and they had internal audit. And basically that was uh, the topic that we started conversation with. So there were troubles she needed to address this audit. But as we explore what she really wanted, she wanted a promotion. And she went and talked about this promotion to her manager and, and she received the promotion. So because of this kind of big thing uh, next to her, the, this internal audit and current problems on, on the project, she didn't see the opportunity to get the promotion very quickly. So just like that in two weeks. So yeah. Uh, what's important? Setting your goals in a positive form. It's not, I want to avoid this, I want to fix this, but what I want to have instead. And ask why it's important, because some of our goals are just uh, means to an end. And because we stuck and we concentrate so much on this particular mean, we don't really think about the bigger and more important thing. And we don't also consider that there are different means to get to this end. So important to explore your goals. Sometimes you can do this on your own. Sometimes you can uh, involve your team and brainstorm. But yeah, there are different ways to do this. Um, another thing that people do is that they, they set the goals based on their current level. And it means that the goals are not big enough. So if your goal is for 10 years, make it kind of a big ass goal that it, it's scary, but it's gonna be available for you from that level. Because in 10 years, you will have a different level of skills. You have different ex level of experience. So this goal shouldn't be limited by what you now think is uh, possible for you. 
So set impossible goals and then see what we need to address in order to get there. And sometimes you will find that there are shortcuts and some things which you didn't allow your, you, yourself to think are actually quite reachable even in shorter period of time. And another, the last point here is to uh, schedule some time to think strategically. Uh, so there, there is a, there, there's a, even a, an article where there's a schedule of different kind of stages. So kind of once a week, you, you consider weekly goals, once a month, month, you consider yearly goals and so on. But it doesn't really matter what, what specifically the schedule. What matters more is that from time to time you are taking stock and you're thinking about what's really important, what's really important in, in the long run, what's the legacy you want to, to leave, what's your dream, what's your desire. We don't, on a day-to-day -day basis, think about things like this. And, and this is a big mistake. Because if we, if we not follow our dreams today, when we will do this? Yeah, so think big. With that, that was the last one. Just to summarize, um, th there were different type of tips and advice, but at the end of the day, it boils down to, to kind of more or less several categories. First one is reflect. So take time to pause, to slow down, and to take stock of what happens, what's happening. And just allocate time specifically for that. This is basically your job as a leader, to create vision, to uh, think strategically. Second one, to find support and resources. So ask people for support. There, there's a lot of resources out there. So I, I strongly believe in the world uh, as a resourceful place. So there's a lot of people who want to help you. Just you need to find them and enlist them on your cheerleading team. Talking to a lot of people. So it's going to be invaluable for you to talk to people. Like your, your job when you got the promotion will be to uh, get up and go and talk to people. Well, maybe sometimes not get up, just use your headset, but, but still talk to people. The people will be the source of your success. Uh, the people will be the source of the value that you bring to the company. So you need to talk to people, to people underneath you, to people above you, all kinds of people. And the fourth one is be vulnerable and be honest and authentic. These are the things which first one will help you sleep better if you don't try to pretend anything. And second, they help you to build better relationships. People appreciate the authenticity. And when you treat them with honesty and uh, authenticity, usually they will open up. And this is also crucial for you to, to be able to build trustful relationships. So now the question to you, what was your biggest insight from this long talk, which made my mouth dry. Oh, I didn't see Radix reply fried chicken. That's a good choice.
I actually didn't really know that how much time it will take, but it looks like we are more or less on time. We almost ran out of time, but it's almost the end. <clears throat> Let me check your <clears throat> expectations, feel a bit more confident. Uh, pitfall bullet points, stories about pitfalls, useful for my career, tips and tricks uh, for career growth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so insights from Anna. Need to ask stakeholders' expectations on activity scope. Not even plan to drop back to previous title activities. Again, it depends. Depends on the kind of role that you have. Yeah. It's gonna be a long way. Yeah. Any other insights from anyone? Be authentic and sincere, finding a mentor and ask people for help to engage in and build relationships. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Adriana. I have transferred my personal growth goal from stop being able to start being humble. Well, if it would be a coaching conversation, I would ask you how you can combine those. <laughs> because for me, they don't sound antithetical. They can complement each other pretty well, I think. Okay, if, you, if you're still Typing, that's okay, but to the next slide. And I think Anna already wrote it. It's basically based on the insight that you just shared or had from, uh, from this meetup. What specific actions that you can take in the nearest day or two? Let's, let's put a time frame on it. I did it all of them one at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And some things are, are more precise and concrete, some are less concrete. Like finding a mentor is much easier than becoming authentic. <laughs> but still, yeah, th th there might be different steps and kind of see how you can break down those insights and, and really start doing something about it because as in coaching conversations for me in, in this conversation also important to give you some content that that provokes some insight but also see and if you're not able to come up with anything right now maybe later see for yourself what action you will take based on this insight because if there is no change if there is not no action follows this meetup in a way it's wasting time so there should be some some change and hopefully you were asking the questions that i suggest you to to, to ask yourself okay um almost there so if you want to stay in touch here is my email you can easily find me anywhere not anywhere i'm not in instagram probably but you can find me on twitter and linkedin if you experience any issues like this i'm always offering free calls so you feel free to to book a call with me probably I'll, I'll post this link so that it's clickable no i won't be able to post because i cannot copy it from from the screen but yeah you can reach out to me in in whatever either using my email or writing me a message in Meetup if you want to have a conversation. I'm, I'm always happy to, to help. Sometimes I'm 
it really how should I put it? it it's really painful to see the struggles that people go through even in cases where it shouldn't be that critical because sometimes they kind of didn't address it quick enough or they don't have enough support and yeah sometimes just a, a simple short conversation can make a huge difference so i'm i'm offer this so if you need any help let me know so there was not, not not that there were not that many of us today mm. But still, if you have any questions, any comments, any feedback to me, I would also appreciate your frankness about this presentation. So open mic, anything, anything you want to share or ask. I would only like to thank you, Alex, for the nice and interesting insight. Uh, it was really a nice training and mm -hmm. as always it's a really nice pleasure to to follow you so thank you for all this information and uh, your pace and the way you organized all the information was really flowing so mm -hmm. thanks 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 adriana alex uh, maybe a quick question what what's your like feedback or what's your goal so why, why why do you do this all this process of mentoring and coaching mm. as i mentioned i i went through this process myself and it was unnecessarily hard for me and i know that it could be much easier with proper support that people have uh, of course not everybody's going to be working with me as a coach so there are things that I want to share, which could be at least some approximation of what I can give them if they work directly with me. So I, I really want this knowledge to be available because like here I integrated things that I read, but mostly all, all these things come from my experience by working with people as a trainer, as a coach, as a manager. And like there's a lot of information out there, but I think some pieces are missing especially about kind of what i call inner game kind of what's called inner game and coaching and i think this is maybe one of the most complicated parts of, of this journey so for me my end goal is to help and to reach as many people as possible and share the information which can uh, make this transition and make this journey easier for them and less stressful so this is really important for me i mean yeah, I like to work with people for money, but I always provide free stuff and, and I always support people when I can. And luckily I have the privilege of having enough for myself so I can share. Thank you for the answer. Mm -hmm. Anything else, any questions, comments, criticisms? No? Okay, so I already kept you two minutes more than it's, it was scheduled. So thank you for your patience. I will have this recording and, well, hum, in, in a humble way, but I still think that this is, this is very important material. So if you think this is relevant to anyone, I will have this thing recorded, I'll post it somewhere on, on YouTube. So if you know people who can benefit from it, share it with them, because I think some of these points can prevent people from hours and hours of struggling or days or months. So yeah, I would appreciate if you share it with people for whom it may be useful. That would be great to share this training. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, well, thank you in advance. Yeah, I'll, I'll post it in, in the meetup, the, uh, the link to YouTube. So that's perfect. Can... Cool. With that, uh, I'll give you back your time. I'm, I'm wishing you a nice evening, nice week, nice summer. Hopefully, you'll be safe. Uh, you are. And 
that's it for today. Thanks, Alex. Thanks. Have a nice evening. Bye. 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 Thank <laughs> you.